All right, so today we're going to be going over reversals and how you can spot a reversal. All right, so let's get into it. First, we have to find what is our levels of support and what is our level of resistance? Because remember, sticking with the ICC, we want to find where the indication is going to come from at all times. So in this case, we'll be looking for a level of support here. We'll be looking for a level of support in this area right here. And then we'll have our level of resistance right here because this is how far price can come up. So within this range, this will all be a no trading zone. And we'll be waiting for an indication to come above or below one of these areas. So this whole place right here is a no trading zone. All right, so we got our first bullish indication. Anything above our level of resistance is telling us that price is bullish. So this will be our bullish indication. All right, so with this bullish indication will come a correction because this is only telling us how far price is coming up. Most of the time indications is price grabbing either buy buy side liquidity or sell side liquidity in this case it'll be buying it'll be taking out all the buyers and it'll be taking out early sellers back down into this area but right now it is taking out the buyers that are up here getting in off of the breakout with no expectations or no sort of tp that tells them to get out so you have to think in a sense of if i was a new trader and i seen a breakout would i buy this yes but would I know where to get out at? No. So that's why we always wait for the indication because the indication will tell us where price likes to sell at. Price will tell us where the orders stop at in general. So first we'll have our indication. Price will pull back in. So from this level, we'll be looking for price to repeat the same thing back above here. This time we know exactly where to target, which is the top of here, because when price buys, it buys to the highs. So we're gonna continue. We're still back in our no trading zone. We're going to wait for price to come back above this gray area. Um, roughly soon, possibly. All right, so price is starting to, I fell. Still waiting. All right, oh, there it goes right there. So price came back above this level. We'll be looking to take buys roughly around this level. Keeping our stop loss roughly below here. Just giving it some space, we can do this, or you can do this, giving it some space. You can do one of the two, however you choose. I personally love giving my trade some space. All right, with that being said, we'll be looking for the same push up to this level as we've seen before. Now that all the buyers are taken out of their trades because people are hopping in buys off the breakout, don't know where to target. They target something way up here in the, the Neverland Islands and then end up coming back, getting stopped out, sellers jumping into the market, and then later on getting stopped out as well. So as we see here, price is starting to make its way back above this level. And like I said, we'll be targeting here. Let's just go ahead and see. All right, so price finally hit its target. Now let me explain all the commotion that was going on. So one, if we jump down to a smaller time frame, so one, we'll notice that back above this level where we bought at was a good area to buy. It made a high and then made its low. It also made a new high, so it made its low. So after price makes a new high or a new low, I want you to understand how liquidity works in a sense. So let's say price has a level of resistance, right? And price makes a new high above this. Let's say we have the low already and then price comes back and gives us a new high, right? Since there's certain traders like us that sell, I mean that buy the second time around, we know where to get out and there'll be a new indication. So with that new indication, price can do whatever it wants to take out everybody it wants to. But how do we protect ourselves is because we know price is normally targeting here price normally targets here. So we already know where to get out at. 
So anything above here is just our risk to hold. Basically, this is our risk to hold. Sometimes there'll be price giving another indication, pulling back real simple and then continuing. But sometimes there'll be trades where price will continue down, trying to break all the sellers, all the buyers out at once. And this is just totally wiping out the whole market. So in this case, if we go back over here, let me just get rid of this. If we go back over here and we're looking at price, we can see that once we got that breakout, we was looking for price to repeat the same thing. With that being said, price comes down, makes a low for itself, brings up, gives us a new high. Now it tries to do this on a slick and most people won't notice, but price gives us a new high. And then it comes to take out all the buyers from this area, stop loss here because they're thinking, oh, they're thinking small, so they probably put their stop loss here. But for us, we're putting our stop loss levels below here because we like to give our trade room and it's not even bad on our risk to reward. So with that being said, price will end up making that high, trying to take everybody out, still not doing major damage to any of the structure. We still have a new high in the market, so we're worried about that more than we are selling off. As it brings this way self back up, it gives us a new high and like i said again it's going to try its best to take everybody out because you know trading shouldn't it's easy but it doesn't like the markets doesn't want price to be super easy to predict so then it comes out taking out all the people here as well so as we see here we have more people taken out around this level more people taken out around this level and around this level as well, like I said before. So I'm just going to go ahead and move this over. We have a lot of people getting taken out. That's cool with us. Like I said, back above this level, there's always going to be a chance to buy price back up above this level. I don't know why it moved. But yeah, every time price is back above this level, this is safe for us to buy along with the fact that we should be trading with the volume. So this one trades London. So let's go ahead and have London on. Let's just do 30%. All right, so back above that gray area. Remember, this was a London session back above that gray area. So we have more volume to push as well. So this would have been a good trade. This would have been a good trade. And this would have been a good trade. All days was a good trades, like we said before, and we didn't even have to see that those were sessions. So with this being said, price taking out all the buyers, price taking out all the early sellers as well, because price broke a low. So they would have been thinking, oh, since it broke this low right here, as you can see, it only broke this low once it didn't come back around. So that's what I'm saying. If you want to buy or sell, make sure you see a second confirmation, which would be A break above giving you an indication a correction and then continuation you need to see something like that before you get into any trades just so you can have a good confirmation that price is going to do one all right so then price is taking out all the people and then coming up hitting our final target now we have another indication in the market that the price of euro aud wants to continue higher so let's just go back to the time frame we was on to keep everything simple and we're going to see price continue higher. We got that indication. Let's see if we can get a correction. Price does a slight correction, but we're not too worried about it because we're already in the trade. And we got more buying pressure back above this level as well. So price is still giving us bullish confirmations to continue with price. And the whole time that we are riding with this trend, we're going to mark out our high levels as well. I forgot to mention that part, but our TP levels are always highs. If you're buying, it's always the highs. If you're selling, it's always the lows. So as you can see, price is taking out all the highs, making new indications for itself. All right, so we're going to continue. Price is still giving indications. We finally got a pull back in now, right? So since we have this final pull back in, if we want to see buys, it has to be back above this level. 
we see price having a level of support here. And uh, we don't want to see price break below that. If we do, we could possibly see sales. So price ends up breaking back below here, coming back up into this area. And then finally coming back above here. So this is doing a couple of things that most people would be um, looking at. So like I said, we never buy or sell the first time. As we can see here, like I was saying earlier with the support, we don't want to see price break the support, but it did grabbing out all the sellers that was getting in first here. So pretending there was all sellers right here, getting in for sales. And then as price started to make his way back up, we already knew the routine, the routine anyways, back above this level. We already know the same routine. There's an indication, a correction. Hopefully that correction, like I said, when I was explaining over here, price likes to break lows just so it can grab in and ma manipulate people to get into the market. So that's exactly what it did. Got people to get in on this breakout sell. Don't know where their TP is gonna go. So then they end, get, end up getting trapped, stop loss hit, and then price for us starts doing everything we want to. So our entry would have came roughly around here and we would have been targeting price to hit up this level. All right, so we're gonna continue. And we have a new high in the market. So this is also letting us know that price could continue higher. And I'm wondering if that is it and that is it. So if I'm gonna to continue to explain, I feel like price for Euro AUD could give a correction and then a continuation back higher because we do have new highs in the market. So sooner or later, price is gonna to react to price having these new highs. So we gotta pay attention to that. Overall, this was a quick explanation of how liquidity works. And then we have an example of a no trading zone as well. And the situation, if you're looking for a reversal, remember the main keys to looking for a reversal is having one, a support level and a resistance level. Price needs to be traveling in between this level. And then you'll be looking for your indication, a correction, and then a continuation above. So this is the base model that you should be looking for when it comes to a rever reversal. All right, so with that being said, I hope you have a nice day and thank you for watching this short video.